<clears throat> Hi everybody. This is our movie to help people that might have missed Shadow Plot 6 on direction. And what we did in this is we already know that we can find local noon on a shadow plot, which is simply the shortest shadow of the day that marks the highest sun point. But what we found out in this lab is that there's more pieces of information we can get from that. And what we did is we put some gnomons on globes and we held our flashlights up and we rotated the globe around to try and see where we would find the shortest shadow. And what you see on the, the picture right now is where we saw that happen. And whenever the toothpick was making its shortest shadow, everybody noticed that something specific happened. And that is that the shadow lined up exactly on one of the lines of lines of longitude. No matter where you put it on the globe, if you have a gnomon on it and you move it around and you find the shortest shadow for the day, the shortest shadow always lines up with a meridian on the globe. Now the reason that's important is because those meridians all end up at the same place. And that is, in our hemisphere, they end up at the North Pole, which means the shortest shadow of the day doesn't just tell you the highest points of the sun, it actually gives you the direction of north and its actual true north, meaning pointing right at the North Pole, as opposed to magnetic north, which isn't at the North Pole. So once we find our line of, um, once we find our line of symmetry on any shadow plot, which is of course gonna go right through local noon, that line of symmetry is also going to be a pointer to the North Pole. So it also helps us with direction. So on our questions for shadow plot six, I'm not going to give answer all of them, but I'm going to give you an idea of what to do. It says, what does the shortest shadow of the day line up perfectly with? We just saw it lines up with the line of longitude. And if you find a local noon shadow on your shadow plot, you've then found a pointer to the North Pole or the direction north. And that means on three, what direction would you have to face to look at the sun at local noon? Well, if the shadow at local noon is pointing north, remember that the shadow is like an opposite pointer. So to see the sun, you would have to go, you would have to look south. Now, number four requires that we do a little work with our three season shadow plots. It says, draw a correct compass rose showing the directions north, south, east, and west on each of your three shadow plots. The gnomon should mark the center point of your rose. So I am to, going to, for the sake of this, do this on our winter shadow plot. Now, the first thing I got to do is find local noon. Now, this is kind of an odd plot because the line's a long way away because even the shortest shadows in winter are pretty long, but I'm going to find local noon somewhere in here because these are all the parts that are closest to the line. And if I put one right here, which is, I think, right about where it is, and notice I'm going to make that line all the way through my gnomon here, uh, and that one's pretty good, and now I can check it. And the way I check it is simply by folding it and seeing if the sides of the shadow plot match up with one another. So I'm gonna fold it on that line, and the lines do match up pretty well. You can see that they come right together. So that is a good line of symmetry. This is our local noon time. And oddly enough, it actually went through the time noon, which is very actually unusual. Okay, now with what we just learned, if the shadow is going from here to here, and that's our local noon shortest shadow of the day, we just found out that that means this is the direction north. Well, if that's the direction north, then down here, pretty obviously, becomes the direction south. And now I'm going to find east and west, but notice that I'm always working off the gnomon as the center of my shadow plot or my, my compass rose. So I'm going to put my protractor right on there. I'm going to make it mark at 90 degrees. And then I simply have to put this on here and go like this and make a pointer and a pointer and this is going to be west and this is going to be east. So now I've used a shadow plot and I've figured out the four basic directions of the compass and that's what we just did on four. You'll have to do it for all three shadow plots but I just showed you how to do it on your winter shadow plot. Um, and then notice that the gnomon should mark the center of your rose, which it does. 
Now it says fill in the table telling the direction of the sun for each time listed. I'm not going to do each time because some of these times are on a different shadow plot, but I'll do the one for winter so you see how it works. Well, the first winter time is 928 a.m. Well, 928 is the very first point we did during the day, which means the shadow went from here to here, which meant the sun has to be directly opposite that. And if we want to describe where the sun would be, it's in the southeast sky. So if we want to look at the sun at that time, you have to look in a southeast direction. So we put southeast in that. Okay, we'll do the final one because it's also a winner at 3 p.m. Here is 3 p.m. way over here. Again, think of the shadow at that point went from there to there. And so the sun has to be over here. Now it's in the southwest portion of the sky. So now all of a sudden we have our shadow plots acting as a compass, giving us directions. And then the final question on here is an ecliptic question. And again, you have to do three of these. I'm only going to do one of these for the shadow plot that we did, which is the winter. But now we want to know where was the sun at sunrise, where was it at sunset, and where was it at local noon? Well, again, you just look here. And really, they're the ones we just did at 928 in the morning and you know it might have been a little bit earlier in the morning we could have done here but that's not going to change where the sun basically is it's going to be right down here the whole time so in the winter the sun rises in the southeast part of the sky at local noon it's the shadow is pointing directly north which means the sun has to be directly south so if you look at the ecliptic in our area, when you hit local noon at that highest point, you're going to be looking south to see the sun. And then at sunset, again, we could extend our line with some times we didn't get, but that's really not going to change the basic direction of the shadow. And once again, it's going to set in the southwest. So if you could see the ecliptic during the wintertime, sun rises in the southeast hits local noon at, and is directly south and then sets in the southwest. And that is shadow plots and our uh, directions. Okay? And you only need to do these with your other shadow plots. Thanks for watching.